Jennifer Beamer, owner and operator of Exley Diet Art by Science, and this is Fiber Talk episode number 16, and today we're going to be talking about Montedale. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for being here and watching this video. If you're new, thank you for stopping by. And if you want to see some of the other videos that I have, I have some playlists suggested for you above. And if you like the work that I do, the best way to support me is by liking and subscribing and putting comments below to let YouTube know that this is a good channel to watch. Furthermore, if you want to support me in a bigger way, you can also stop by my web shop at expletedye.com and I've got things like yarns and wool, bats, dyed top, you name it, I've got it. If you haven't heard of Montedale wool, you're probably not alone. I had never heard of this until I went to a fiber co-op in a suburb right outside of Chicago. And the unusual thing about this was it was a uh, combed top, but it was probably a small mill that made it, and um, it was actually braided together individually. There was one that was blue and one that was brown braided together as the combed top, so you got approximately equal amounts of both colors. But I'm pretty sure that the blue is obviously a white wool that was then dyed blue, and then the brown, because there are little flecks of other colors, a little bit lighter ones in that mix, I'm pretty sure that it was an undyed colored wool. So I didn't know what to do with this. I dragged it all over the world, and I posted this comment ages ago, oh, probably somewhere around a year ago. I wanted to do another fiber talk episode and in order to make these I usually have to think about what wool I don't have, I do a little bit of research on how to buy that wool, I get a sample, I spin it, and I sort of develop some insights from that. Um, so getting a hold of this in the UK was just not really possible so I wanted to get some suggestions. Someone, su someone suggested that it looked a bit compacted and that can sometimes happen with combed top. So when I started um, playing with the actual fiber, what I did was I just pulled out a staple length to see how long it was and didn't really know whether I wanted to keep them individual and spin a bobbin of each to kind of see how the colored wool and the dyed wool uh, differed because sometimes with color, naturally colored wools they might have a different micron, they might have a different crimp structure than their white counterpart. And so I had that thought and I, and I played around with that and then I thought well I don't know because I also want to do something with this finished product. So the next thing I decided well I could make a carded bat but I had card wool all the time on my drum carter. <laughs> so I wanted to try something yet a little bit more different and I decided why not long draw. <laughs> As some of you probably know from having watched other Fiber Talk episodes, I often cite those pages from the Fleece and Fiber source book and it's because there's a decent amount of information. Usually there's a bit of history of the breed, uh, some fleece characteristics, sort of giving you a rough idea of what to expect. It's not a comp comprehensive guide, but it really helps you understand what you're going to be getting into, but it also helps you put into context some of the things they might be saying in um, those pages. And Montedale is actually only uh, a a little over one page. <laughs> if you can see here, there's the text and then a little bit about um, the fleece characteristics, how well it dyes, etc. and then some photos there at the bottom. Let's see those photos. So it's a fairly new breed, uh, established in the 1930s by a Missouri man. Decided to combine Colombian rams with Cheviot ewes to try and find that 
perfect combination of good meat, easy to lamb with a decent fleece quality and found that combination didn't work. But then later did the reverse where they had, where he had um, Colombian ewes with Cheviot rams and found that this fiber was actually um, still really quite usable, but also the meat and lambing qualities were there as well. And again, I don't know how widespread this wool is, but in terms of what I would call a workaday fleece, this is it. The total fleece weight can be upwards of 12 pounds, but the range that they've listed in the book is seven to 12 pounds. And the micron diameter is what I would call a medium fine. So it's between 25 and 30 microns on average. And so if you're looking for something that's still next to skin soft, or at least has the potential to be so, then Montedale will suit that purpose. But because it has a slightly coarser micron diameter, it's actually going to be more um, abrasion resilient than some of the other finer breeds um, that are adjacent to it in the micron count. And the one thing that I discovered, and I'm really glad that I did long draw, was it actually works pretty well for long draw. First off, I'll say, if you have a fleece long enough for combed preparation, or if you like spinning from bats, this is going to be a very, very simple wool to uh, spin up. In terms of long draw, um, I found that my particular way of doing the Rolags still resulted in a pretty decent long draw uh, yarn. I probably could have had a smoother experience with the long draw had I used hand cards and done that properly because I took a slight shortcut. I, I figured because the wool was already really well uh, combed prior to me buying it, it was probably just going to be a little simpler if I used my blending board. So this is the blending board that I have. And basically what I did was I took uh, both uh, segments, the colored blue and the colored wool, the brown, and I just sort of brushed it on here until I used up about a quarter of the amount. And then I used the two rods or the two dowels that come with it. I tried my best to get it wrapped around the one so that when you did cross section, it would be a circle like this. Because if you, if you use these together to clasp the end of your wool, what can happen is you get more of like a figure eight, right? So you get two little holes, which can actually make long draw a lot harder to do because those uh, fibers that sort of do the figure eight, but in the middle, they don't draft out as nicely. So I had to alter the method of removing the roll legs from my drum carter, but because, or sorry, my drum carter. <laughs> I had to modify how I was removing them from the blending board so that I wouldn't have any issues during the long draw. And by using the blending board, I was able to pull off four at a time instead of normally what you get with hand cards, you just get one. So I was partially a little bit impatient, but also last year I was finishing up my thesis edits and looking for a job and trying to find time to relax and get on with the things that I hadn't been able to do for the past year and a half. Uh, writing a thesis is hard, it's like a brain baby. When all was said and done, I probably had between 20 and 24 woe lags. And so um, that equates to roughly five or six times that I laid down fiber on the blending board so that I could get four Rolex per um, uh, application, I guess. And so um, I ended up with uh, two bobbins of this long draw. And the surface of it is a little fuzzy. So I think it would be very, very warm. It didn't really bloom a whole lot. And that might have something to do with both 
it being really well combed and so it's removed all those small bits which are really nice for helping to fluff out the yarn. And the second thing, which is I didn't actually use hand cards to fluff it up more. So with a blending board, I kind of sacrificed the potential bloom that the wool could have because I didn't card it more to kind of separate those fibers more than um, they were already. So despite that, I think if you wanted to use this fiber, for doing long draw, you absolutely could, and you would get a really nice, soft, fluffy yarn that has next to skin softness, but a lot of durability. Another thing that I wanted to add, which I'm really quite proud of, <laughs> one skein was 248 yards, and it was 51 grams, and the second skein was 342 yards and 69 grams, and that probably, resulted from the the first one that I did that was probably the second bobbin that I spun so I didn't quite get one or I didn't quite get two full bobbins I got one full bobbin and one almost completely full bobbin before I I took it off and skeined it but here's the thing that I really love and appreciate about having done this I'm not great at long draw but Apparently, with this wool, I was able to make something very consistent. So, for the 248 yards, that equated to 4.86 yards per gram. And the second one, the larger one, that was th 342 yards and 69 grams, that was 4.97 yards per gram. So, what this basically means is the amount of fiber that goes into uh, each yard of um, yarn is so consistent between the two different skeins that from the start to the finish, there, were, there was no variation. Um, so even though I didn't have the best preparation method, this wool worked really, really well to give me a very consistent product. And if you're wanting to make a sweater yarn or if you want like a big, heavy, oh, so cozy blanket or something, then if you're working with a wool that will naturally help you spin very consistently, then you can do these big projects without having to stop every, I don't know, couple minutes and double checking your gauge, which I'm currently doing with another project. <laughs> Despite the fact that I'm an absolute beginner at long draw, I was actually able to produce two very consistent skeins, totaling about 590 yards. So now I have the task of finding a project. If you have an idea of what I could knit with this, it comes down to about a fingering weight yarn. Um, it's just around 500 yards per 100 grams, which fits it into that, um, I would call it heavy lace, but looking at it, it's really fluffy. So I would say it's probably more like a fingering weight that can creep up into a sport weight in some of the, the thicker parts of it. So if you have an idea of what I could knit to show off um, this particular breed, put that in the comments below. It could be a free pattern, it could be a paid for pattern, it could be you know, something really intricate. I've done some lace work so I can, I can do that as well. Um, but yeah, if you have an idea of a pattern that sort of works with just under 600 yards of yarn, please let me know and I will see about getting this knitted up. Alternatively, if you have a weaving pattern that you think I should try, please let me know about that as well. I have a rigid heddle loom with just one rigid heddle at the moment, but um, if you think it would probably be better as a scarf than knitted, I will be open to trying that out. But one of the things that I wanted to figure out was how nicely does a long draw, slightly puffy Montedale look as a knitted fabric? Will it still maintain that stitch definition? Because that's one of the things that uh, I know some knitters are interested in because if you do a lot of cable work, or if you do stuff with uh, coloring, you might want to have 
a more defined uh, stitch pattern um, and you need the yarn to kind of allow that to happen. And so as a spinner, you get to customize a lot of this stuff, but I feel like knitting it plain stockinette won't really tell me a lot. Um, it will inform me, of course, but it won't tell me how it looks in a finished piece. So if you um, have a smaller project that will allow me to do a woven sample and a knitted sample, that would be great too. So I could use one skein for two different projects. Have you used Montadale wool before? If so, let us know what your experience was in the comments. Was it similar to mine, different? What other methods did you choose for prepping it and spinning it? Did you dye it different colors? Did you notice any differences between the colored wools versus the white wools? We would love to know. If you have ideas for future videos, fiber talk, tutorials, etc., please post in the comments below and I will add it to my ever-growing list of ideas. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. Because I am still an absolute beginner with long draw and I was still able to create a very consistent yard, yarn, bleh, yarn, 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 yard. <laughs>